Hello there. Suppose I have a rocket in an elliptical orbit around this planet here. Now this rocket, it has a limited amount of fuel on board, and so we have to be careful here. And so we want to ask, is there some ideal location in this elliptical orbit in order to make the best use out of the fuel on the rocket? What we want is we want to find the location that maximizes, maximizes out the change in the kinetic energy for my rocket. At which spot does my rocket get the most energy transferred into it using the exact same amount of fuel? This is actually a really interesting question because one might initially think, well look, if I have some fixed amount of fuel on the rocket and I'm going to be releasing it in some very specific way based on, you know, how the rocket is engineered, then aren't I just limited by those constraints? Does it even matter where I'm actually doing that fuel ejection process? And if it does matter, then why? So to go ahead and start answering this question, let's go ahead and imagine two model rocket carts. I'm going to call them A and B. And these rocket carts, A and B, are pretty much identical. They both weigh exactly the same, one kilogram, and they've each released one solid chunk of fuel. And they're ejecting the fuel identically, which means the impulse directed onto cart A and cart B is exactly the same. And specifically, that fuel is ejected to give both carts a little velocity boost of one meter per second. The only difference between the two carts is before the fuel was ejected, cart A was moving at one meter per second and cart B was moving at 10 meters per second. Let's try calculating the kinetic energy changes for both carts. So let's go ahead and start by finding the change in kinetic energy for cart A. We simply take the difference between A's final kinetic energy minus its initial kinetic energy, right? Right, and remember, kinetic energy is just one half mv squared. So final is going to be one half times the cart weighs one kilogram. And its final velocity is just one meter per second plus one meter per second. So two meters per second squared minus, and then of course its initial is going to be one half times one kilogram times it started out moving at one meters per second squared, right? And so using these numbers, we can see that the change in kinetic energy of cart A is going to be 1.5 joules. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for cart B. So delta KB here is going to be equal to, we take KB final minus KB initial, right? And this is going to be, we go one half times one kilogram times, what's our final velocity? 10 plus one, 11 meters per second squared minus one half times one kilogram. And cart B started out moving at 10 meters per second squared. And now using these numbers, we're going to see that the change in kinetic energy for cart B is 10.5 joules. Well, hold on, this is a really interesting result. Even though carts A and B ejected their fuel the exact same way, simply because cart B was moving faster to begin with than cart A, it gained significantly more kinetic energy during this process. It's almost like a little magic trick. The faster you're moving, the more mechanical energy you'll get out when you burn your fuel. This phenomenon is referred to as the Oberth effect. So yes, we now know there's an ideal location for this rocket to release its fuel. It's the spot where the rocket is moving the fastest, okay? And in an elliptical orbit, that spot is going to be where the rocket is closest to the planet at this location called the periapsis. When the rocket is closest to the planet, that's where it's going to have the least potential energy and the most kinetic energy. So it's going to be moving fastest there. So that's the spot where we want to release the fuel in order to give the rocket the highest burst of kinetic energy according to the Oberth effect. Now, based on how I've been talking about the Oberth effect so far, it might feel like we're just getting this energy for free. Don't worry though, there are no conservation laws being violated here. In the example with the rocket carts, I was only tracking the kinetic energy of the carts themselves, 
not the carts and the fuel. We have to consider the entire system to get the full picture. So here I went ahead and drew out a little one chunk rocket here again. So I have this rocket of mass M sub R, R for rocket, and it has a chunk of fuel on board, and F for the mass of the fuel. And at first, they're moving together with some velocity, which I'm calling capital V. Then, this rocket launches the chunk of fuel, which from its perspective, it's launching out with a speed U. And so now what I'm going to show is that if we track the kinetic energy change of this entire system, it's going to be independent of this green V here. It doesn't matter what speed everything was moving at if we track the kinetic energy change of the total system. So first things first, it's just one line. You can immediately show that the velocity burst that this rocket is going to get is just going to be mf over mr times u. Right, to make your life easiest, just put your frame, put your frame that you're tracking moving with this velocity v. So you consider your initial momentum to be zero, right? And then it's gonna be just one very quick line. You get this result here. So once you get this velocity here, let's track the rest of the physics in the space frame. I'm gonna call this S, and S is totally zoomed out, right? So it's watching the fuel and the rocket moving together with this velocity v before it all breaks apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to track the kinetic energy of the fuel and the rocket in this process. So to keep ourselves organized, I'm going to write down rocket and I'm going to write down fuel. Okay, and so we're going to track the kinetic energy changes for both. So for the rocket, it's change in kinetic energy, delta K is going to be K final minus K initial. And so what's the final kinetic energy of my rocket? Just one half times M sub R times, what's its final velocity? Well, it's capital V plus this additional MF U over MR, and that's squared minus one half m sub r, and of course its initial velocity is just this v here, squared. Alright, what about for the fuel? The fuel's change in kinetic energy, again, equals k final minus k initial, it's going to be equal to 1 half mf. The fuel's final velocity is going to be capital V minus u squared, you take this difference now, and of course, its initial kinetic energy, 1 half m, times capital V squared. Next, let's go ahead and expand out the quadratic terms for the rocket and the fuel. All right, now expanding things like this, we can see that for the rocket, these V squareds are going to cancel out, and for the fuel, these V squareds are also going to cancel out. And then for the rocket, I'll go ahead and cancel out this MR here with each of these MRs. So excellent, now we have these really nice expressions for the change in kinetic energy of my rocket and the change in kinetic energy of my fuel. And so now we wanna know the change in kinetic energy of my total system. And that's just gonna be equal to, you take delta K of your rocket plus a delta K of your fuel. And so let's write that out. UV MF plus one half mf squared over mr u squared minus uv mf plus one half mf u squared and look these terms here are going to cancel out with each other in other words these terms with the capital v are canceling out and so we get this final expression here delta k total is equal to one half mf u squared times 1 plus mf over mr. And there we go, right? So what we can see here is that this change in my entire system's kinetic energy is totally independent of this capital V, the velocity that the rocket and the fuel were moving at prior to the fuel ejection. So now we can see that the Oberth effect is very powerful from the perspective of astronautics, almost magical, but from the perspective of physics, there's nothing mystical about this, nothing esoteric. The kinetic energy change of your entire rocket and fuel system is purely dependent 
on the mechanics of your actual rocket and how it's actually emitting out its fuel with this speed U. If you found this video helpful or interesting, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. I love to hear about people getting on board. But other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.